Come on, don't lie to yourself. Come on. There you go. There you go. The truth will set you free. Hello guys, this is Mega Dude TV here and welcome back to another video. Now, guys, this this is the start of a new series on my channel. This is a series that I am so excited to make for you guys that I think you guys will absolutely enjoy. Now, before I start this video and in essence before I start this new series on my channel, this new saga of Mega Dude TV, this new era Right? I want to give a little bit of a backstory as to why I even considered this idea in the first place, right? Now, recently, I've been watching a lot of cartoon reviewers on YouTube. Just a lot. A, a lot of them, right? And a lot of them were fucking awful, right? Just, the cartoon reviewing community here on YouTube is absolute dog shit, right? So, the idea for this series came along. Why not go after some of these reviewers that deserve videos made on them and and just me giving my honest thoughts on them now some of you guys watching this video right now are probably wondering if the response videos i made towards kalobi phantom strider enter and stuff with scoutfly are part of this series right well to be honest with you the answer to that question is no those videos didn't seem like me being a reviewer reviewer Instead, there were just simple response videos. Now, don't get me wrong, I still really like those videos, right? Especially my Phantom Strider response that <laughs> angered a lot of moronic fanboys. But I can make a series of me actually reviewing these channels and going more in depth with the quality of their videos. I will also try to throw in a quick response in there if I deem it necessary or entertaining. I feel as if that's a better way to do things in the long run that will, you know, entertain you guys as much as possible. And for those guys wondering about my best cartoon reviewers video that I've been planning on for a while, let me just say that video is going to be delayed a little bit. I want to focus on launching this new series at the moment. But anyways, I've talked a lot already. It is time for episode one of the reviewer review. And I'm going to start by looking at a reviewer who I found thanks to some fans on Twitter. And it's something almost shocking because I didn't expect to get a reviewer like this by means of fucking Twitter, of all things. It's, it's almost unexpected, but, but I am definitely not complaining. But anyways, this is a reviewer who is a cap-wearing Neanderthal. A young man of absolute annoyance and a person whose age is very hard to recognize I am of course talking about baseball Sam one now most of you guys have probably never heard of this guy before I mean I don't blame you the guy is about as obscure as I am with around 950 subscribers at the time of me writing this script which isn't a bad thing mind you right you know we all had to start somewhere on YouTube and this guy makes cartoon reviews as well as well as another series on his channel that is de definitely a gold mine of mental retardation but but we'll get to those videos soon enough <laughs> oh boy I, I I cannot wait all right I, I seriously can't but first let's start off with examining his reviews since that's the focus of the show after all to analyze his reviews we first need to know this very important thing about his reviews what is the style of his reviews in essence how does he go about making his reviews that is a very key thing to know as style allows us to understand how entertaining his reviews might be well this is a guy who's a huge nostalgia critic fan i mean a 
really big fan of the Nostalgia Critic, or Doug Walker. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery in most cases, but here it's absolutely weird as fuck. This guy, I shit you not, refers to himself as Nostalgia Teen Critic. And no, I wish I was joking by the way. Nostalgia Teen Critic is just something that screams Doug Walker fanboy. This is a person who's trying so hard to be like the Nostalgia Critic and show off his love for the Nostalgia Critic to the point where it comes off as extremely painful. He copies Doug Walker's reviewing style almost to a T in which he wears a hat, gives a plot summary of the thing he's reviewing, and interrupts every once in a while to make a really unfunny joke. Now look guys, there is nothing wrong with being inspired by or being motivated by another more popular YouTuber. Nothing wrong with that at all, right? But to shamelessly just become a shitty clone of that YouTuber is just fucking stupid. And in my opinion, this is even more painful considering the fact that the YouTuber he is copying isn't even good for fuck's sake, right? I mean, seriously, would any of you guys want to copy this? Um, yeah, I didn't think so, but, but in all honesty, even if you copy someone entertaining, that doesn't make it any better. It's still a shit thing to do either way. Well, whatever. Originality aside, what really matters is if his reviews are any good. If his reviews are good, then I really wouldn't care if he's trying to copy another YouTuber. It all matters in the execution. Well, are his reviews any good? <laughs> I think the answer to that is obvious considering I literally described him as a cat wearing Neanderthal and a shitty nostalgia critic clone. But no, this guy is an awful cartoon reviewer, which really isn't surprising considering most cartoon reviewers on this website are fucking garbage, especially the more popular ones. So the obvious question now is just what makes his reviews just so unbelievably terrible? Well, let's start with the fact that he doesn't even use actual footage to show the media he is talking about and rather he uses a camera or phone or whatever he uses to record the footage in a very ghetto manner. Seriously, this is shit you'd expect from people back on YouTube in 2008, not 2017. Also, keep in mind that he does this in all of his reviews that I have seen from him. This gives the video a very ugly display and what's worse is that it makes him look like he really doesn't care about his production values or his videos like at all. Now, some people might say that the possible reason why he doesn't like that is to avoid copyright because as we all know, copyright is the bane of pretty much every reviewer or really just any YouTuber in general that uses content that doesn't belong to them. Well, if that's the case, then that's still not an excuse. If he is really doing this to avoid copyright, that he could easily take a page from Animate Ball and just put a background on the cartoon in question. That way it still looks presentable and nice while still avoiding copyright infringement. So there really isn't any excuse for him to use this style of getting footage and like I said earlier it just makes his videos look fucking ugly. I think you guys understand my point, but do you know what's even worse about this guy's videos? It's the simple fact that this guy's videos are so insufferably long when they really don't need to be. It's so fucking annoying seeing this guy make 20 minute reviews on TV episodes in a nostalgia critic style. Most of the time, he just gives a plot summary of the episode in question. It's really long and boring. Now, 
let me make something very clear so people can understand. I do not mind long videos or reviews. Robo Buddy's review on Steven Universe and Watcher of the 2000s review on the original Teen Titans are some of the best cartoon reviews I have ever seen. Now, the review made by Robo Buddies was a whopping 40 minutes long, while Watcher's review was literally 55 minutes long if you add up the two parts. Now, admittedly, Watcher's video did have long, boring skits that nobody cares about, and those skits did drag out the video unnecessarily. But at the end of the day, that's not the point. The point is, I do not mind a long review. The problem with Baseball Sam, however, is that his reviews do not need to be 20 minutes long on average. He reviews TV episodes, which are generally 11 minutes long, whereas Watcher and Robo Buddies both review TV series that have a lot of continuity in them. So it makes sense for their videos to be long, but with an 11 minute runtime, the review of the episode really shouldn't be that long. It kinda reduces the point of the review as I can just go watch the original episode myself and give my opinion on it. Another reason why his video link length bothers me so much is due to the simple fact that he doesn't explain much in his reviews. Again, let's use RoboBuddy's review on Steven Universe as an example. In her video, she had 10 main points she wanted to go over, and each one of her points also had a lot of what I like to call sub-points, in which they are points inside of points that also need explanation and are related to the main points. This is another reason why her review's video length isn't a problem to me. It's organized, detailed, and informative. But what does Baseball Sam do? Well, he barely makes any actual legitimate points and spends a lot of the time just questioning realism and making shitty jokes. And when he does make an actual point about the episode, he doesn't even give a nice detailed explanation to said point. A really good example that shows this problem is his review on the regular show episode, Excellent. One of his shorter reviews too, clocking in at 14 minutes. But trust me guys, it's still very irritating to sit through. In this review, he states this at the beginning of the video. And one of their best episodes that I hope will be hailed by many people in the future is the season 3 episode, Excellent. Yeah, I think it's a dumb title too. But despite that, this episode is a lot of fun. It's memorable, funny, and even emotional at times. It's memorable, funny, and even emotional at times. Well, with that amount of praise for the episode, you would think that this could lead to explanations being made on how the episode is memorable or emotional or whatever. But no, the entire video is him literally just giving a plot summary of the episode with shitty jokes thrown in. And whenever the episode makes a joke, you would think, just by common sense, that that would be an excellent opportunity to explain why the joke works, thus supporting his claim on the episode being funny. But that's something you'd expect from a good reviewer. A reviewer who actually knows what the fuck they're doing. This is what he does instead. And once they get there, Rigby asks the waiter for the excellent challenge. But after hearing that, the waiter is actually reluctant on giving him the challenge because he points out that nobody has been the challenge. Like, nobody. But then Rigby asks him this question. I'm the customer, right? Well, yes. What does that sign say over there? Uh, the customer is always right. And what am I? The customer. And the sign? Sir, please. Say it. The customer is always right. <laughs> Actually, Rigby does have a point there. I mean, like, you can't just go back on your own policy like that. I mean, like, that just wouldn't be right for any restaurant to do. Yeah, no shit. Now, can you please actually say something of meaning instead of giving a plot summary for the episode? At this point, you start to ask the question, how is this a fucking review? This review is absolutely pointless. He barely makes any points, and whenever he does, he barely explains them at all. And yet, even though he doesn't explain anything, his review still ends up being 14 minutes long. He says so much, 
but at the same time, he says so little. There are also many times in his reviews where he flat out just doesn't understand the joke in a cartoon, in which the joke in question is completely misinterpreted by him in the most annoying way possible. This makes him look like a complete jackass of a reviewer who has no idea what he's talking about. For example, in his review on the Gumball episode, The Painting, he says this. I'll have to clean that up. Oh no, there goes another one! Oh, what am I like? Okay, okay, uh, parents and parents watching my video, come here for a second. I need to ask you guys a question. If you guys were given one day, just one day, to do nothing but relax, like you could sit on a couch for hours and hours and do nothing, if you were given that opportunity, would you take it? Or would you do what Nicole just did? Go ahead, answer that question. Oh, no, 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 wait, 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 no, 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 don't answer it. I can actually answer it for you. You would obviously go with doing nothing but relaxing, because what parent out there would do what Nicole just did? Well, that's the joke they are obviously going for. It's clear that anybody, if given the chance to relax, would take it, but since Nicole cleans a lot, she got bored easily. It's supposed to be ironic. Now, I am not trying to argue that the joke is funny because it really isn't. But questioning the realism of the joke and not understanding it at all is fucking retarded. This is an issue I see with many cartoon reviewers, by the way. Another example of him not understanding the joke in question is from his review on the Teen Titans Go episode, The Fourth Wall. Take a look at this clip. We then cut to a movie studio where Robin is trying to get the rest of his Titans to act a lot better. And he tries to do this by giving them a certain sentence and tells them to express it in a different way. Like expressing the sentence in sadness or happiness and so forth. But Robin doesn't like their performances at all. So Robin tries to show the rest of the Titans how to do a award-winning performance. Mary took her ducks to the pond where they ate Okay, that's not award-winning acting, that's more like Jim Carrey over-the-top acting. Wow, you know, it's almost like that's the point of the fucking joke. This should be incredibly obvious considering the fact that Teen Titans Go! is a comedy show and the main purpose of that episode was to make fun of the criticism directed towards Teen Titans Go! Now some of you guys are probably already punching your monitors due to that amount of stupidity, but guess what guys, it gets even better. He decides to compare Teen Titans Go to a fucking Batman movie. And no, just because you can cry doesn't mean it's good acting. I mean look, here are a few examples of some award winning acting. When the chips are down, these uh, these sim I find it absolutely hilarious that cartoon reviewers make these dumbass asinine comparisons between two very different pieces of media not realizing that the comparison needs to make sense for fuck's sake and speaking of teen titans go he displays another common issue with the cartoon reviewing community here on youtube and that is the simple fact that this guy obsesses constantly over Teen Titans Go. But honestly, this guy is one of the worst I've seen when it comes to this issue. Let me put it to you like this. Mr. Enter has made many videos on Teen Titans Go with various months spread out between each video. Phantom Strider has made various lists just to find an excuse to shit on Teen Titans Go in some way, shape, or form. Now, while the way Enter and Strider does it is annoying, they do not compare to this guy. Baseball Sam has made, I shit you not, 11 fucking reviews on Teen Titans Go. Just, just why? What is the point? 
seriously, what is the fucking point? You, you know that you don't like the fucking show, so why are you even watching it? How is it fun or entertaining to just talk about the same cartoons over and over and over again? Even cartoon reviewers that I like are guilty of this, such as Pie Guy Rules, who makes a shit ton of videos on Spongebob. But at least with Pie Guy, his videos are good, unlike this fucking moron. But anyways, I want to address the last issue with this channel that is probably the most cringeworthy. Remember earlier, when I said that he has another series on his channel that is an absolute goldmine of mental retardation? Well, here it is. This guy has a stand-up comedy series. Yep. A cartoon reviewer is trying to make people laugh. Lovely. So, let's see if this reviewer at least knows how to make a funny joke. Now guys, 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 I will show you one joke from this guy and tell me if it's even remotely funny. Alright, here's the last one. Hey, I got the peanut butter in the back. You want to come smear it all over me? Um, how is that funny? No, seriously, how is that even funny? Now look, guys, I'm a fan of immature humor, okay? I am not trying to criticize him for using immature humor. But, uh, there is no joke to it. It wasn't clever. Also, the delivery on that joke was pretty fucking obnoxious. So yeah, not a funny joke. And that is basically his jokes. In a nutshell, well, basically, if you want to see a young nostalgia critic copycat reviewer talk way too long about cartoons, not explaining any of his points in any detail while being extremely unfunny, go right ahead. This is the reviewer for you. Oh, and he doesn't use actual footage for his videos, so his production values also suck ass. Anyways, I really don't have much else to say about this guy because Unlike him, I don't need to drag out my video longer than needed. Sometimes, less is more. Less is more. Less is more. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this new series of mine. It was definitely a video I had a lot of fun making. Again, special thanks to Metro Retro for making this kick-ass thumbnail. Follow me on Twitter which will be in the description below or on my channel page. And if you want to see a reviewer review on a reviewer you guys don't like, send me requests. Anyway, this is MegaDoo TV or The Ultimate Ranter, signing off. Have a nice day, everybody.